I think there's a lot of pressure on EG in the laning stage to perform. And Entomage falling behind in this game is going to hurt them really hard with the mid-game power Vega has. I definitely agree with you. If, if the AM can get the early start and work his way into that battle fury, then the mana comes through. And I think that's the primary reason why they're also looking at the AM. They wanted someone that can be really strong in the mid-game. The illusions to get rid of the tombstone without having to risk your, your primary hero. And he can just chase after if they want kills or away. So... That's the logic, at least, behind EG, because who else is really left? Like, the panel, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel. They were looking at a Spectre, thinking that maybe he could be picked up. I think this was a better pick than Spectre. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's that an easy one to say. I think for EG. Um, I'm not sure what was remaining, actually, out of popular carries, with the Ember banned out, like they said. I think the only one which uh, would still flag up highly for me would have, would have been something like the Arteezy Lycan. That's true. That would have been up Could have actually been a pretty nice pick, I think. 30 seconds to battle. But in this case, it is the RTZ AM, which puts Smell onto a hero which a lot of Smell fans will enjoy seeing him on, the Queen of Pain. Definitely one of those signature and skill displaying heroes. There's uh, Vega and EG. Uh, EG do not want to fight for this top rune. Like, if they have to do that, it's too hard. But then again, is there timing? Okay, Mag is going to cog and keep them off the rune. I think, I think you realize if he sticks around, he's going to die here. So, Samal will take the bottom rune when Ranger takes the top, and that means the mid matchups remain even, and there is no contest at the start. And Ortiz is just dodging on dying. That's the plan here. He's going to immediately rotate bottom to lane against Clockwork, probably with the help of, I'm guessing, PPD will rotate down, and then Fear will help Samal in mid. Nice, always having a double ranged hero with chilling touch against you on level one in mid. <laughs> so no one is going to just wait. Guaranteed last hits. And Fear also going for the early nuke, because he could look for an, like an enfeeble approach to try and keep no one off the lane. So when no one does attack, he doesn't really have a lot to work with against Samal. This looks awfully similar to how game one started for it, no one. It really did. Lane. The upside this game, however, is like, is a win ranger. You can power shot your way to CS if really required. I'm interested to see how well Mag does on this safe flame. <laughs> Looks like Undying might be looking to rotate down there too. This EG lane is not very strong, AA anti mage, but I think it's the best choice they have right now. It can't keep Mag at bay very well. Uh, PPD, of course, with. If he's surprising them a little bit with Chilling Touch and they get a good blink inside the cogs, they might be able to do it. <laughs> But Mag will still get some decent experience. Solo's first two decays get both Fear and Samel twice over. Fear's walking around with 4-7, like 3 oh, life, wow. and now it's 340. Oh, that just shouldn't Samel. be happening. Like if, if you get a level 2 power shot, you got something to work with, and Fear is basically dead. He's going to Nightmare and actually hold the Wind Ranger in position. Samel and Fear just holding hands a little too close. Getting double decayed once is understandable, but three times in a row in a dual lane mid, I know it's a harder lane to position yourself in against decay than side lanes, but still, they have to respect this pressure that Solo can output. <laughs> and now he's going to rotate, so we'll see the fight for the bottom rune is not actually a fight, because PPD is <laughs> not interested. <laughs> Bounty rune? He's actually walking over, keeping tabs on Solo. He rotates up through the river, so if they want to fight this, in fact, Arteezy instantly moves off the lane. Solo had vision of this, and he just, well, he starts with a decay. Arteezy will jump forward with a chilling touch, left bonus damage, and Solo triggering the tombstone to get himself out of this one. But it ends up being extra money for Arteezy. A burning through a Dyer's hell of a lot of mana for the Undying. So he can't harass in the lane anymore. He's not going to trigger a mango so he can decay twice in that bottom lane. Same can be said for PPD though, he used a lot of mana. Okay, he does have a clarity, so he's gonna get his mana back up, but... Yeah. RTZ, good thing for him, he gets the tombstone, that's some gold. I think he lost three or four CS going for that bit of harassment until dying, but I think it had to be done. If he got the kill, then it would have been worth it. Absolutely. Even without it, I think it was the right play. Yeah. Uh, Universe having fun on this top lane. Up against a lot of harassment. And in fact, with the rotation coming over from Fear, there's a little bit more to work with here. But still, you want to come underneath the gyro with Black Cannon Rocket Barrage? Not really the dream. Even down on bottom lane, as this pull through was happening. PPD and Arteezy aren't giving Solo any kind of space here. With this continuous mana break, by just killing off the mana of the Undying, he's lost almost all of his aggression. Well, two mangoes are always nice. And now that he's out of mana, this trading for Arteezy is actually not very good. 
Doesn't really take much damage. Stout shield, and of course had three creeps on support, so Arteezy has to back down. <laughs> and Mag's got Frank, so he'll be healing up too. Well, oh, jump here again. we go. They're going up to Solo with a chilling touch bonus damage. They have more than enough to do the work, and EG will claim first blood. Not the strongest of lanes, but EG patient until they can get their hit. And the trade-off is how's Universe doing? He's one level behind Mag's clock, so decent for them. And in the mid lane, of course, as expected, Sumail is beating no one. He got so much help in the start, so he has to be able to. But again, no one is managing to catch up. Sumail trying to get very aggressive. Shadow striking as well as screaming towards no one. It's only a level one Shadow Strike, however. It's a level three scream for Sumail. So he likes to go for this build a little bit more. Heavier on the scream, so when he hits level six, he has a scream and Sonic Wave ready to go. Arteezy, not a healthy man. Here's a salve. Yeah. Almost helps him to use the salve when he's got the decay on him. So Mill in the mid lane is... How far ahead is he? Actually, not that far ahead. On experience. Uh, he, he actually nightmared over on... Over on Pasha, so it isolates Seema in a way. Fear's still got his brain super verbal, and with the actors combined, Seema, he actually has to shell our grave. He uh, starts the TP. That was a little late, but it's still gonna be it's still gonna be long enough. He ate his mango by mistake. He messed up his hotkeys, so loses that a little bit, so he has to buy a new one. Uh, like the idea of running around with a mango and dazzle here actually always allows uh, bottom lane, PPD, caught out by Mag, RTZ will come and join him, that coffee's still gonna hit, and with the decay coming in from the undying, combining with the tombstone, Vega will get revenge on the bottom lane. In this laning stage, well, the important thing for EG is that Arteezy is getting farm on his anti-mage, and it, they are accomplishing it. This is not the amount of farm that he would get in the safe lane, but in comparison to the enemy team, I think it's good enough for now. This is when the tricky part begins, though. Undying is starting to feel more confident. He is pressuring him away. Mag now finally has a good position in the lane. He's also level 6, so at any point in time, they can just jump on PPD. He has to move away, and I'm imagining Arteezy will rotate soon. Yeah. Rotation is the next get next part of this game. Even the Beastmaster looked towards the universe. He's still three quarters of a level away from having level six. But considering how aggressive Vega are positioning themselves, like up on this top lane, Fear and Universe, they're gonna go for solo. The nightmare preps the work. The hawk on the tree line is what helped him out, and it's just a successful rotation for Samel. He doesn't have mana for his sonic wave. The cooldown's gonna make this very difficult. The universe can't catch up for fear. Still in range for the brain snap, but Samel goes down. Past with a great rotation. It's gonna be picking up two now for Vega. No one's on the run after fear. Not and maybe so oh he's got powerful off cooldown. Is he gonna go? He's gonna have a crack. It's gonna hit Fear! 11 HP on Fear. Very nice attempt there from no one. But it looked like it was gonna be a good rotation for Wait, where's Clockwork's rocket? Clockwork, Dying. hang on, too, hang on. Ahead. It's too far ahead. But the, the thing you need to keep in mind about this is, it looks good for EG when some is in, and him running out of mana for the Sunning Wave is of course just a misplay. But Nightmare works for both teams. They buy time for Vega to reinforce, and they obviously rotated up heroes as well, so they were ready in numbers to take the fight to EG. And the fact that Solo got Tombstone down already won them the fight. Samil had to blink aggressively, had no escape route after that. It becomes a very easy fight for them as a result, and now they get the tower. This is almost... that's a pretty big loss for EG right here. Yeah. And that one time's like, do you want to blow your regeneration just after you TP, just so you have the mana bag? And he gets Shadow Strike here. Potentially, Samal could blink himself forward and go for that Sonic Wave attack. Arteezy was looking for it. They could have committed both Sonic Wave as well as Mana Void to get that kill on the Clockwork. But they'll just let him walk back to base now. And Arteezy is starting to do some pretty good damage here on bottom. So they're responding to the pressure that Vega are putting top. I still think Vega will be able to take this top tower and maybe defend their bottom Radiance one at the same time. But they need to be able to teleport in the Undying first, and he's still securing top. I'd be a little bit more concerned Radiance about the defensive Vega do TP to the bottom lane. Because it's only going to take a quick rotation from Samel, and he does have that big burst damage, which we haven't seen inflicted They saw him onto ward, Vega. They know what's happening here, so Pasha should not be getting caught out alone. But with no crate wave from EG, they can't really attack this anyway. Not unless they want to take some considerable damage. I guess the upside for EG is the fact that Universe has completed up, uh, uh, has managed to hit level 6. But there's just no mana sustain on this Beastmaster yet. 
And I'm wondering too if this is one of these Beastmaster games where we go back to the, the classic build, just the straight Necro Rush. They're still looking for Pasha. They are. But he's playing it very safe underneath the tower. ET are wasting a lot of time if they don't end up finding this kill somehow. They, they really want to go there. Samal's going to walk in. Starts the Shadow Strike. This is now, not happening. Yeah, they're, they're baiting the TP. They bring the Dazzle down. Now, the Dire Observer War did get out the fact that Mag was rotating, and RTZ blinks into him. Mag will drop the cogs, gets burned out a little bit. Still that blink on cooldown for six seconds. The Shackle lashes on RTZ. No one needs more damage. The Ice Blast on the way in, combining with the Sonic Wave. It doesn't really do enough. The AM Dory down. It's a one for one trade off with the win range being the collateral. Mag will keep the AA out, but Samael, no blink for three more seconds. He needs to get himself out. Now the blink is up, away from the Rock of Barrage. A pass, but Solo dropping down the tombstone. Still no blink for Samael. Has to use his one charges. And he will get away from the rest of Vegas. So just a straight out one for one AM for the Ranger. EG did commit really big ultimates there, though. I guess both teams did, so... You just, just have a little longer cooldown. This Sonic Wave is still off for a minute and a half, and if you look over to Vegas side, they almost have everything ready to go again. Yeah, and they make the most seconds, out of it. They might get a tower, just, or at least some good damage in here from Pasha. Tombstone on cooldown is, of course, a big issue for them, and they might just cancel because of that. The only thing that would really slow this down properly is when PBD reaches base, it can have the mana to throw out the Ice Blast. Which is now coming down. It's going to hit Pasha pretty hell as well. In fact, hits all three heroes. There's no one to follow it up. In fact, it's Samael in the middle lane. Who gets burnt out by the clockwork cogs. So again, another kill coming the way of Vega. Now putting it at 5-3. And they'll finish what they started before. They're going to take out this bottom tower. The flag cannon will mop up most of the creep wave. And they're going to catapult their own on the way. There's just not enough time for EG to catch up. In fact, actually, look at the build coming from Arteezy. He felt like he couldn't go directly into the Battle Fury, so he's got a headdress up his sleeve. He can go into the plaids later on, but... It's a very standard build for uh, Antimage when he's against harassment, but usually we see it picked up, say, if you're laning against a Darkseer or something like that, that just outputs consistent harassment. Since the buff to headdress giving three health regen instead of two, it's way more valuable. But it's not a pit stop you want to make along the way. This battle period for Arteezy is actually going to be probably close to like 18, 19 minutes at this rate. Yeah, it really delays him. Mag, Universe, okay, he's going to walk down to Universe, which will allow for the raw, the Ice Blast, and then uh, boom with the Mana Void, not even required. Ends up saving it, Niji, just a good prep for that fight. But while they're preparing for that one, Vega are just destroying this mid-tier one. More and more money being pumped into this Windranger. That Aghanim Scepter is not going to be a slow one anymore for Windranger. And Vega gets the more important towers. Uh, they, well, they've taken all three, so... <laughs> Uh, but they get the mid tower, they don't even lose the top one. They're now three towers ahead and they're on the hunt here as well with the invisible wind ranger. Well, it works that we've gave the vision, but actually no, not a PPD. TZ will get out. Yeah. Blinks up and then the Universe TP's has away. one second, he's gonna be fine too. They don't see him. Yeah, they just but killed. he lost his bar. Ah. Acceptable <laughs> acceptable casualty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the perfect sound for that. Call down. Yeah, Samal's got no blink again. Up to level three. If you had blink level two, I think it would have died actually. So uh, Pasha going for that kill is worth the worth the chance, right? If it doesn't work out, oh well. You have four uh, seconds to down. Okay. Samal just blinks away, leaving Arteezy. Arteezy. Now he's got to do the same thing. Away from where his posture as well as Mag with Mag and hook shot himself down to Mel. He's got some extra damage. Arteezy needs more time. Gets his way through the cogs. And in fact, with Fear holding Pasha in, the Fiend is going to do the work. The Ice Blast will connect. Jarek is going to go down. Now he gets Sonic Wave will spill, but no one's there. They're going to get a one for one trade off. Samel blinks himself forward, but Dazzle can go to work now. There's still Shadow Grave available, and they isolate Fear while Fear isolates himself Radiant inside the Nightmare. He can't brain zap, can't do anything. And that'll be a two-for-one trade-off, but you trade your two supports for the Gyrocopter Core. EG have to... They might get more too, Seema? Um, No. They keep having to commit so much to protecting Arteezy, and during all of this time, he doesn't get a kill. He, I think he got an assist, but no, like, very little gold flow for him. They're gonna come down for Seema. Burning yeah. a lot of mana, damn, yeah, that's yeah, is. <laughs> Burns really hard. If he had a medallion, he could have one-shot Arteezy there. I think oh, Arteezy man. should be very happy he TP'd out in the tree lane too and didn't just keep running backwards because no one, that power shot had connected. they will also be low and he's just being harassed everywhere. The, lock, the rock is even going to hit Arteezy on the top, dropping him even lower. 
Just no safe places on this map. 3G really, because wherever you feel safe, the Clockwork can just rotate him for a hookshot. And with the Blade Mail now completed over on Mag, you can't fight back. Now, this is a very powerful item when you get it this early. It's one of the big advantages of being able to run a safe lane Clockwork like they have in this game. Uh, I think he's a much more impactful hero than Beastmaster right now. He's like a walking roar. Mag has a hookshot, which is also a good stun. He zones them out with cogs. He has way more damage output than the Beast. And now the Blade Mail too. He can... Put both Samael and even, yeah, even the Beast of Universe in a very bad position. Yeah, Samael is build, building into the Orca, but he can't even attack the Clockwork once he's completed it. Yeah. Like, who else does he attack? He wants to attack into an Undying. That might be useful. Solo, is he actually... That Ice Blast is dropping him very, very low back at base, but he will survive. He just has to remain there thanks to PPD. Mag's also in a bit of no man's land. Shadow Strike from Samal will be able to slow him down. Fear just commits instantly into the Fiend's Crypt. They want a quick and very efficient kill before that Blade Mail can be triggered. Alright, TZ was involved again but did not get the kill. So still another thousand to go for his Battle Fury. This might still be a little bit faster than I expected. So maybe minute 17 instead of 18. It's okay when a Queen of Pain gets the kill though. Because it's, it's still the, big two, the two big timing items EG's looking for. It's the Orchid as well as the Battle Fury together. Yeah. And Samael can't really have this less Orca being delayed anymore. And they need... Vega need to itemize against an AM and a Queen of Pain that they barely have stuns or silences for. Uh, Clockwork going for the Blade Mail I think is a good choice. I'm curious to see if Mag wants to go for a Hex or an Orchid sometime in his build to deal with these heroes. Uh, or... Well, who else would you get the Hex on? Samael blinked himself into Solo as well as Pasha. The cooldown won't connect on anything, however. And he just triggers the illusion run and runs away. Poor nice. Hulk. <laughs> this wow, really? Are they trying this? That's no. Very, they, they've very got to be baiting EG into a fight. That's all this should be. Yeah, well, like, four tombstone is ready. It's a good position for it, too, because you just throw the tombstone up on the hillside. The trade off is the fact that RTZ is still trying to force out this tier 1 tower on the top. The ice blast will make it very difficult. It's both Tasha as well as no one. So no heal from Seema will help out. You know there's another Hawk coming out in one second time. So EG will get the vision here. And Antiti just keeps creep skipping it. They don't have Ice Blast for the fight though. And all the damage is done is being more or less negated here by Seema. True. And he's just started up the weave hoping EG will attack. It still feels like fate. They're actually going to smoke themselves up while sitting inside the river. Power shotting and going. They need that Hawk. They need the vision. And now, hook shot up. They go after Universe. Samael, well, he's sitting around, but if he throws that Sonic Wave, he's just going to end up hurting himself more than helping. So, Vega, they bring down the Beastmaster. Tombstone has been popped, and it's not in really the most favorable position. Solo, he, he can't solo it to keep it alive. And Roshan's low. Now the Ice Blast does come in. Very small radius, however, because PPD is just too close. He throws down the Vortex. They see inside a pit. The Sonic Wave! Oh, Roshan, no, no. Roshan denies him! Samal will get killed up by Windranger. Roshan finally brought down him. And it will be the Aegis Sea model into the hands of the Windranger. That was a very costly Roche to take, though. It took them very, very long. Arteezy should be on top of the net worth by quite a bit, and he is. Gyro died. He got his Battle Fury and another 1,000 gold during that, like, Radiant what was that? One and a half minute span that they went for Roshan in? So basically the question being, what you're asking is, you took Roshan, but at what cost? Yeah. Like, the Gyro Copter, like, he also died during that. So you lost your top net worth hero on Vega, and now both Samael as well as Arteezy are in front of him. He's almost got the plasma already. It's pretty good timing for Arteezy here. They're gonna gank, bottom lane. This was the hero. With the smoke, yep. they can just roar onto Pasha. Fiend's Crypt can be committed as well. And in fact, Fear gonna brain stamp as well as Fiend's Crypt. They really, really wanted that Gyro dead. I feel like EG are in a very, very good position in this game all of a sudden. And I'm saying that right after they lost the Roshan fight. But the fact that AM has got as much as he did when he was the one hero Vega and really needed to shut down, and Samael also isn't looking half bad with his farm. Mm -hmm. These two blinking heroes will just keep split pushing and farming very well. Pasha, if he keeps dying like this, they just won't have enough in the tank for when this AM gets big. That's right. Because really, when you look at it, if we go into another 40 to 60 minute game, like our game one and game two, who's really on top of this? The wind range you can do wonderful damage, you got great initiation, Vega's got really great team fight control through the Undying and Dazzle, but is it enough to battle against a six-slotted anti-mage when you still have like Ice Blast, Beastmaster, Raw Control? 
Like, there's a lot EG has to offer as well going into the late game. And they want to do bottom lane again. The Nightmare, solo, stays where he is, that Ice Blast can hit for friend. A little early on the Brain Sap there. Mm hmm. And he will be healed up to full. But they can't really push the tower, I think. Okay, he's going to use the Tombstone as well. Maybe they will. Just Undying and Dazzle doing Undying and Dazzle things in the bottom lane. Very confident play here. No fighting. In fact, Artiti just blinked back up into no one as well as Mag. Because he wastes a little bit more time here, he can blink a second time. And with the Creep Wave arriving, Mag doesn't have a clean line for a hook shot, but he'll still be out of latches. One more second to the blink, the Shackle won't latch. And Artiti blinked over the cogs in the way. The power shot will still connect. But there's so much committal, and now EG understand the two big cores are up on the top second final bottom lane solo. This time that Ice Blast will connect with the Sonic Wave. They get through the Undying and down towards Seema, putting that Orchid to work. The bottom tower can also be denied up. So EG, not only do they keep their enemy mage alive, they're able to stop the push on bottom lane and deny it up to up the tower. It was actually a really nice attempt from Vega the way they set it up. With these two heroes pushing bottom and the other smoking, Arteezy got a false feeling of safety in the top lane, but the two heroes that could kill him were not down at bottom. But they didn't manage to find the line for the shackle shot, so it didn't work out. Trading two supports for a tier two. Woo! Decent, okay. I think. Yeah. Uh... He just ran a void to stop Mag from deeping back. He's wasting time. That's what, uh, This game almost feels like a waste of time. <laughs> for, Ve for, for Vega. Yeah, this is such a waste of time. That's, that's all EG are doing. Like, they're just making him run around and just, like, lose 20 minutes of their life. It's what EG want to do for sure, just split push and buy time. And RTZ is starting to get so far ahead now that Ve Vega are losing this game very, very much <laughs> over the last few minutes when it was looking so good for them. They're just not able to put the amount of pressure that they need to. At least they can kill PPD here. No one jumps in. Power shot will get the vision. And PPD, PPD will die to Vega. Yeah, that one Radiant Observer was scouting it all out. So Vega... They still have to worry. Like, you get a kill in an AA. That's great. But Arteezy is now taking out your tier 2 tower. Mag is here to try and stop him, but... Like, Mag doesn't have enough control to kill off the Animage. And this is the timing we were also talking about for the AEM. It's a horrible timing for the Undying, because now Tombstone is going to become... Uh, being put into jeopardy. And it just makes AEM overall stronger. And we're 21 minutes into the game. It's the Man of Star build-up that I'm talking about here. Yep. Once this is up, you could also go for solo pickups. Take away all the mana with a quick attack, use it aggressively, not just defensively. Solo was trying to scare Universe away from the Tombstone, but he remained calm. Killed it off in TP. There goes another tower the way of Vega. No one will claim that one. Oh, the Ice Blast flying up to the top lane, Undying's already down. So Solo might be able to play Intimidation Tactics previously, but... That's easy. Gets the kill. Tower's still got a lot of life left on it, so it is a hero for a tier two. And Ichi keep losing this map control. Like they've it got one matter. remaining out of tower, but is it because you're, you're just looking at Hawks? You're looking at like. I mean, of course, map control mm. matters, but it, it's not enough, is what I meant to say. Yeah. Arteezy's still finding enough farm, and even with all the towers gone, we're starting to reach that point when it's going to be very difficult for Vega to even kill him in the first place. Well, he's going for more. He's chasing after Seema. He doesn't really burn that much mana at the moment, but he still does a lot of damage. He went for a lot of points up in stats too, as, uh, as this anti-mage. Yep. That's the way to go. Mid tier 1 tower. Okay, it's within deny range. They want to go for this. The Maldus jumps forward, gets the Orchid over on Seema, commits the Sonic Wave. So Seema should pop from the Orchid attack. And when the Ice Blast connecting on Mag Clockwork wants to TP out, the Nightmare will end up canceling this. After they take the tower, they'll take the Clockwork as well. And Solo running forward with his Tombstone won't do anything. He saw it to keep it up, but because he sticks around so long, Samal can slow him down, attack him up, and allow Artiti to find the pick. And no one, he arrives with the Orchid already off cooldown. Pasha might let this cooldown go, but he's Nightmare in control for the moment. He's able to walk himself out of the cold feet. And that's easy. There's no trees to be shackled to. In fact, the male's still on this front line. His blink is available. Radiant structures and EG, they take three heroes now, as well as that tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Universe takes the tier Radiant's 2 tower. tower. And that's so... his level 3 Necro book already. So much weight on no one's shoulders right now to counter out this AM. He's the only hero who can do it. And he now has a blink dagger shackle shot together with his Aghanim Scepter. His farm is pretty good. 
They have to find the initiation angle, and all the while, every time they're looking for something, EG are doing a very good job at spreading out their resources and putting pressure on multiple lanes. And, hmm, I don't know. Mag is getting eggs. I don't, once again, not sure it's the right choice here. It is such a great item on the hero in general, but... It's such a vague item, too. Because it's always it a hook shut off cooldown. It's, it's the attack, go again, and go again, and go again. Absolutely. I'm I'm starting to wonder if this blade mail was not the, the purchase he should have gone for. It doesn't seem like it had that big of an impact. When you have this good farm, he could have actually tried for an Orchid. I think that's what, you know, other... We've seen a couple of other Clockworks players do it. I think mainly Bone7. Uh, like playing with that Orchid when he was against Anti-Mage early on. Because if you get it before the Manta, it's so difficult to play AM on the map. But Arteezy's just not been under pressure. Is that the Yeah, that's it. Like, you can't pressure. Like, it's not for a while I'm trying. Mag has been moving around this map, searching for kills, trying to make the Blade Mail item work. But because EG understands what Vega want to achieve, they're not allowing them to do it. So this is really just a smart decision making by EG. Mag, with this Invis rune, okay, they're... They can try and watch Arteezy go, but Arteezy just bouncing himself around the Radiant Jungle. He'll have to TP back in a moment. Because Vegas knocking on the door. They're sick of chasing after EG. They have to do Instead, this. they push and go. Wait, wait, but they have to, but they're not. Wind Ranger retreats. He sees he sees Arteezy. Okay, well, you had a one in three chance. Tis mine. He had a zero in three chance. <laughs> and Arteezy's already back to the Dark Jungle. So Vega, they hunt him. They know what Nam can do with the hook shot, the shackle. Well, there is one tree there. Focus fire is going, but Arteezy, is he tanky enough? Yep. He blinks himself up. There's little to no armor left on him after a stars now going in for negatives, but he blinks again into the tree line and straight TPs out, survives. And this is the reason I'm saying Vega has to do something drastic. I, at the same time, they can't. It's one of those very standard AM games where you're like, you're the other team and you feel like, okay, we have to start pushing the base. AM is getting too big. But at the same time, EG's defensive capabilities are good enough. They have, they drop a couple of ice vortexes, they throw an ice blast by time, always the threat of some males AoE damage. And to see why EG last picked this anti mage here, it makes perfect sense for the game plan and composition. Mm -hmm. 10,000 gold lead closing in. Roshan soon too. I think this one won't go to Vega. It'll be highly unlikely it would. There's just so much for EG to play around with, like a full Agnum Scepter also completed. Over, over on the Queen of Pain. And dying for... triggers his ulti in mid. Not sure if misclick or not from solo. But this is kind of like the worst time because he, he will not have this for Roshan. Roshan's up in five seconds from now. And ED should be checking it with uh, either Boar or Hawk. But they actually aren't right now. So Mail will have to walk past it. So they don't know yet. It's also possible they don't mind. As long as Vega don't get it, then True. their chance at reaching high ground is almost non existent. Or TZ just keeps farming away. So Mail is making good progress too with the Orchid Axe build up. Beastmaster Necro 3 almost blink. Bane with both Force Staff, Cloak, and a little bit of Bank. And then Vega. the AA with Arcane Boots. Vega just smoked underneath the Dire Observer Ward. They're coming over to Roshan's. So they may try and steal it themselves. And this is when you want to see that Hawk up and running and no one. He starts at the Focus Fire is, is, is coming up Radiant's and Universe on the wrong side of the map. Attack. He just TP'd back home to pick up the Blink Dagger. These double TP's towards the mid lane also being watched by the Observer Ward, the Radiant side. They actually get away with this. Yeah, they get a finish. Wow, that's a little bit of a misplay from EG. I think they could have defended that. Is that gonna... <laughs> waiting for the kill secure. Uh, but Ice Blast chills up Vega. Yeah, they got what they came for. The Aegis the Immortal now. That's a win range of second life. Which means you, you're gonna have that sustained damage throughout the engagement. But EG, they've been they've been burning so much time at Vega previously. What's gonna stop them from doing it again? Yeah, that it might also have been a deliberate choice from EG, and they knew it from the start that Vega were going for it. But they were like, okay, this is the biggest risk. This is the biggest chance for Vega uh, to come back. That we try and, fail. and uh, that Aegis is gone. That lasted a grand total of 25 seconds. Not very important, Roshan, after all. Oh, blink now no on. one is mad. Yeah. He's not gonna find anyone. <laughs> it's the two blink heroes. The male as well as Arteezy, the cop as well as the AM. So easy to disengage. The observed wards, which were also aggressively placed over in the Radiant Jungle, are now timing out. Like both the mid lane as well as the one watching closer. 
and Vega, they're trying to use no one as bait. EG feel this, so they just throw the Ice Blast down behind the Wind Ranger. Blink, oh. Shackle, and Lapsus, it actually got the real last door, and now Solo moving forward, hook shot, and Nikki back control up with the pushback, they're able to do it. Vega bringing down the Anti-Mage. The Mal try to slow it down, but he may lose his own life for this one. They need one tree for no one to work with, and, well, they also need the space. Uh, Blink is not available, and Samal's away. Universe also out the pressure on the bottom lane. He's going to force Vega to retreat and defend. Yeah, they get a key kill. This should open up the map a little bit for Vega. Now, the challenge for them is they have to do it again, and maybe another time, but it's a start. The next challenge is to find AM on his side of the map so that they can get some sort of collateral damage out or force a buyback. Because getting Artis and getting him on the side line is, of course, great. Well, they might have a chance for it. Yeah. That Aghanim Scepter is now up for the clockwork. So if Vega are going to play their style... Well, okay. Oh, that's how might be to lose Steam. The Sonic Wave is going to kill him anyway. Man getting killed up by that Ice Blast. Does not want to hurdle himself forward with the hook shot. Even if you have seen Raw being used as well as the Ice Blast, they're still Fiend Script. They're still level 3 Necro units to fight against. Pasha's moving up. Let's try to find some farm in the fire wow. jungle here. That's depressing for Solo. He just committed a tombstone inside the jungle, but there was only one small wild wing left and the other camp was empty. <laughs> yeah, and the hawk is even watching it, laughing yep. at him. Bottom lane, their pressure's coming. The necro units will be visible, but they uh, they time out the second the, the creep wave arrives. The Vega, they keep coming back. And it keeps getting bigger. 2600 gold, okay. For Arteezy now, what's what's the item? Is it is it the Scotty? Is it what? Because he's got his ultimate orb on him. It's just gonna be the Lincolns. It's Definitely gonna be Lincolns. Yeah, absolutely. I okay. think it's a pretty cool choice here because if you look over the Radiant lineup, how can they kill him? They have to land a Shackle Shot, and what else can stop his Lincolns? There is actually nothing apart from Poison Touch and Soul Rift. Technically homing missile, but he's not gonna skill it, and it needs to reach first before it flunks the Lincolns. He's gonna be almost immortal. Universe has opened up a timber mill, cutting himself his own little home on the bottom lane. And from there, he's just sending out his, his minions, his hawks. And there it is. Lincoln Sphere is now done 30 minutes in for Arteezy. Hook shot up. Does find Fear, but four star actually pushes him over with the cogs of Mag. And Fear will just walk himself away to safety. But there is the triple ancient stack which Pasha is now taking. So that's good for him, pushing himself closer towards that butterfly and will dictate the next item as well from Arteezy. He might have may maybe been looking towards something like an Abyssal Blade, now he'll probably have to go in for that Monkey King bar. Depends who he feels like he needs to counter. Gyro is not a good hero against Antimage, so he if he can counter the other ones or just play a split, split first kind of game, oh, Shackle Shot. Well, if he wants to counter the other ones, he gets evasion of his own, so Wind Ranger, like, if building into the Daedalus can't, instantly attack into the AM, so Butterfly could be the, his next choice. This is actually what no one tried there, it's his only way of killing AM. He has to shackle one of his Manta illusions to the real one. But RTC reacted fast, got out. Still want to commend uh, Vega for how close they've kept the game for the last 10 minutes. I thought EG were going to start pulling further ahead, but the goal is plateaued at 7500. If they can keep this going for the next 10 minutes, they actually do have a chance in late game. Like, AM is a great late gamer. Uh, he's not one of the absolute strongest, but he is up against one of the best counters, which is actually that Wind Ranger. Pasha, real trouble. Yeah, Universe just blinks forward with a sonic wave. They've got the kill. The Hawks just see all. Another farming tombstone. You know what kind of game it is for Undying when this happens. A bad one. It's a split push game. It's, it's the only thing you can do. And now Fia, okay, he's gonna Glimmer Cape in, but already they're left. BPD wants this tombstone. Radiance nope. <laughs> Kill secure. Position 6A is what Fia is saying right now. It's, it's the uh, the core, the core habits of Bane, Radiance of Fia. Alright, so tier 2 tower will drop, that's the last remaining out of tower for Vega. And then looking at Arteezy, they, they, they're just staring him down, and Arteezy understands this. They use the soul rip, but because he waits out to mana style, the hook shot from Mag will not connect. Luckily he's got another one in 5 seconds time. But EG are now splitting the attention of Vega. And that one kill. 
just yielded them 4,000 gold. That was the gyro kill. That's how important they are right now. Getting the tower, getting the pressure. Of course, way more farm with uh, gyro on the sidelines for a minute with zero GPM then. <laughs> At least he spent some of his money before death having that quarter staff purchased. Yeah, he is close to the to the butter. You still just saw how fast he melted in that roar. I don't even think the evasion is going to be enough. And they got enough control over him anyway. Absolutely. You, you got raw. You've got you've got fiend script. You could just do direct attack as well. So you have like the necros. If they burn the mana out, then you can have the mana void that will do a hell of a lot of work. And then you've also got the um, the the pure damage coming from Vayne with the brain sap. Not to mention everything some mail brings to the fight. Evasion really isn't his friend. And back to status quo. <laughs> Basically. Back, back to the farm game. Samel's almost finished up his sight device. With these last mud golems dying, he'll be able to take it. Yep. The ward from Vega on this top lane they, is giving him confidence that maybe they can find that easy. I was actually waiting for them to put it on the cliff side. Just but they're on bit. top of one themselves, so. Yeah. <laughs> Not happening either. EG are just controlling the map very well. It's, it's well, so how, difficult how game to them? play. How do you stop them? Like, you can't keep your own wards up because the Hawks give the flying vision and you got the Beastmaster running around with the gems. So, you can't keep your own wards up. And the one war and the wards you do keep up might will just be off target. Solo! Okay, yep. The heavy commitment, making sure there's no fault. That Ice Blast actually connects on no one. They'll get the Shackle on Fear, but Fear is still with 4 staff available. Limit caped himself to safety. Mag trying to get the other side of the Wild Wing so he can hook it himself up with the Orchid there from Samal. The Blade Man will stop the attack and fear. Did force up himself up for the call down. He's going to brain some one of the Mud Gorms to give him life. It's a male drops. Vega need a little bit more from this. Nartizi, well, he classed EE as one of the guys who gave him a good start. He watches his teammates die while he farms. <laughs> Classic split push anti mage game, this one. It really is. He's got 5.6k gold now. 24,000 net worth, 35 minutes into the game. Curious to see what his item of choice is. Alright, he bought something. Is it butter? Yeah, yep. it's a butterfly. He, he bought a quarter stuff. Yeah, he's got it after this stack. Mm -hmm. A triple stack of ancient room to farm up. That was a quad, actually. He's, got, he's going over 700 gold in experience a minute. Doesn't even have to be involved in too many kills. Like it's 423 any mage. 427 CS now. Wait, who's no talismans just left inside the pit? That's a lot of money up wasted. I think it's no ones from earlier when they got Roche he needed to make a slot. And it's diff it's difficult for them to send the courier or a hero out there, or he might just have forgotten. It sells Maybe. for about two hundred something, so it's not that great. Okay, so you're getting the damage up on the Wind Ranger, but now you're battling against the evasion of the anti mage. Do you leave it at the Crystalis? Like, you just bought the Demon Edge, but you can complete up the full Daedalus and just hope that his attacks connect. MKB or, is better for killing AM right now. Yep. Um, but you'll have to wait another 900 gold. Yeah, I think no one has one job this game, which is to focus AM. I, I see no other way for them to kill him, and I. Yeah, anyway, well. He would have probably bought the Daedalus by now if that was the choice. So he has to itemize 100% to counter the M. Mm -hmm. Even then, it's going to be hard, but it's the one chance they do have. And if if anyone just given even more time, like like he's already at the 3.5k net worth after buying it, uh, not no, with uh, gold after buying up a butterfly, he can he can six slot himself within the next two three minutes at this rate. And there's Roshan up, which he can solo. He might be looking for a fight here. Well, he, sold found it, one. he sold his land. No one bottom lane blink. Raw's gonna go. Samel. Sonic Wave with the Ice Blast connecting. The Beastmaster actually gets almost 800 gold for this. And Fear, Nightmare's over on the Undying. This allows him to kill off the Tombstone and then attack in to this Undying. Wait out the Nightmare. Surround him hard. And now Solo will be brought down. They might even find more because Seema gets caught out. And EG, they're basically playing Leapfrog on the bottom lane. Catching up to Pasha. Samalus is a little bit too far away. Can blink fall, but has no disable. But EG doesn't really matter for them. Okay. Artizi just goes in anyway. Kills off the homing missile. The Kree wave still hasn't arrived, but it's the backdoor regeneration is there. And they force the fortification out from Vega before the Kree wave even arrives. This is two lanes of racks if they don't buy back one Granger, I think. 
the call down at the very least one. And this call out of fly count has been used so early. The creep wave is never going to retreat. Okay, they get one thing. Yeah. Well, they might have more time. Especially if Samal goes to this initiation. He's got everything back off cooldown. And EG, they're just poised, seeing if they will give them the opening. They won't, so they back up, and they're headed to the Wards Roshan. And Artizu with 6k. He sold his Vlads before that, so he didn't even have that as part of the fight. Didn't need it. No. I'm imagining he's going to take the Aegis, and they're going to try to use it right away, and then he'll buy probably an Abyssal. And then he can solo Wind Ranger. <laughs> and there's no there's no choice for no one coming. here. He can't. Mag, he's in a good position for a Hulk shot for Bane. The Nightmare is going to stop this, and this buys the time. It's so big time, and the Boar even blocks out. They can't finish the job, but Hulk is trying to push him back, but it's taken out by the Dire Size. Roshan belongs to EG, and the fight will go their way to the Mana Void. Doing so much damage out with a Scream. His three down, and basically game GG. EG will be the first team here at the Frankfurt Major to get into the semi-finals. Pushing Vega down 2-1 here in the quarters. And it really just comes it comes down to Vega's inability to shut down the AM early on. I thought they would invest a lot more resources into disallowing Arteezy from getting this game. From a draft perspective, I feel like they don't have the counters needed. Um, that said, 